Hey YouTube, this is uh, Curious Guy. Um, today I'm taking a look at uh, microphones for ham radios. Uh, what I've got in front of me here is an opened up uh, mic that I use on my rig. This is an Elecraft MH3 uh, and uh, it has a, a fairly common, I think, uh, four pin connector. The, uh, uh, the tip of the connector and the base or the shield uh, is connected to the electric microphone, the condenser, which is this small uh, silver device in the middle. And then the other two pins, are the two rings, ring one and ring two, control the uh, PTT circuit, which basically one side is ground, the other is PTT, and when you push the button, uh, essentially you make a short to ground, and the radio then takes the appropriate action about listening and, and transmitting what's being heard in the microphone. But of course, if you're using Vox on your ham radio, then uh, the microphone is active all the time, essentially, or the radio is, is ready to transmit uh, pretty much anything out of that mic. Uh, what I was thinking of doing was actually trading up uh, out of a handheld PTT mic and going into a headset uh, arrangement. And one of the ideas I had was to play around with one of these, which is an uh, aviation headset. Uh, this is a uh, David Clark H1030 that I'm borrowing from a a friend of mine, uh, an aviation pilot. Um, the challenge with these is that the microphone uh, and the impedance of the microphone and the output and so forth is different to ham radios in general, uh, and so uh, a little bit of work needs to be done to uh, match these to ham radios. Um, now, in fact, that work has been done for me. Uh, there's a very good article here uh, in the Hints and Kinks column from April 2010 in QST magazine. Uh, which has basically a good article and a description of a circuit to attenuate and to impedance match the uh, the output of these aviation headphones uh, headsets, and that's good because the aviation standard is pretty common. So any of the aviation headsets should conform to this kind of thing. So uh, trying to learn about impedance, I thought I'd try to understand what kind of signal comes out of a standard mic, and uh, trying to do that, I tried to connect it up to my oscilloscope. Uh, but unfortunately, could never get a signal to come out of it. Uh, and uh, I guess the conclusion I had was that uh, the signal, the the bare signal out of this electric mic is pretty small. Um, so uh, what it needed to do was amplify it. Clearly, there's some amplification in the rig taking that very small signal and making it audible and transmittable. Uh, but outside of that rig, we have to build our own amplifier. So uh, basically, I used the very basic uh, one transistor, and we can see that little black dot there, one transistor amplifier, uh, and it basically follows this circuit here, which uh, I found off the internet, and I'll post the link to it later. Don't worry about the blurry detail. Uh, it'll all become clear. But over here, you've got the, uh, the electric microphone. You've got some bias, DC bias power, uh, some AC coupling, uh, an amplifier with one transistor, and then an AC coupled uh, output uh, to uh, strip out the DC biasing and to give you your signal here. Now the amplification of these these particular devices could be in the order of one or two hundred times, uh, so they're quite powerful. Uh, and in fact, we can see on my oscilloscope now as I talk, uh, my voice is being captured by the uh, the mic, and uh, it's all pretty good. The uh, divisions on the on the oscilloscope are about 100 millivolts per square. So you can see that there's uh, you know a good half a volt uh, of of sound. If I raise my voice, you can quite clearly see it's almost uh, clipping on tops and bottoms. <laughs> anyway, um, so it's good to know the circuit works and that my understanding of the mic is that the output's pretty small, and that means my Elecraft KX3 has got some sort of preamp in there to boost this signal before you go into the, the ADC uh, circuit and all sorts of stuff to uh, convert it. Uh, so that gives me a little bit of confidence that I can play around with these circuits and to uh, um, you know see the output. And uh, what I'm definitely going to try and do is build this uh, attenuating circuit for an aviation headset. And we'll well watch out uh, for another video clip on, on that topic soon. Uh, so uh, yeah. As I say, I'll send a link to this little simple uh, circuit I found on the internet, and uh, yeah, that's not much in these mics, to be honest. There's basically a 
one blue resistor you can see there that's uh, two kilo ohms one point three three microfarad capacitor and that's basically it the circuit is very very simple indeed having a look at the uh, Elecraft um, description of their their microphone the circuit diagram I've actually been able to find that given the four pins down here and the, uh, uh, the electrode over here is basically one resistor and one capacitor these other items noted aren't actually in the circuit currently anyway although they're supposed to be in there as part of filtering there's only one parallel uh, 2 kilo ohm uh, resistor and a 0.33 microfarad capacitor electrolytic so be careful of the uh, uh, the voltage orientation the other parts of the circuit here there's two resistors as you saw are part of the PTT circuit completely separate from the audio circuit uh, nothing much to do there okay well um, that's all I want to talk about today obviously let's play around with the microphone a little bit more uh, if I change the setting of my oscilloscope to rolling and we uh, maybe change the time schedule here let's have a look Mike 6 Mike 6 no uh, not quite sure why it's not playing up but hey these things are complicated tools let's go back to the refresh I know it's working there and we'll put uh, the time schedule down here oh well I think I messed up something here <laughs> isn't that great is a live video thanks a lot bye bye